This is CyberSound, your simplified and fundamentals focused source for all things cybersecurity, with your hosts, Jason Pufal, Stephen Maresca, and Matt Fusaro. Welcome to CyberSound. I'm your host, Jason Pufal, joined today, as always, by Steve Maresca and Matt Fusaro, uh, and joined with our special guest, uh, Lou Ardolino, to continue our discussion around uh, young people and technology. Hey, Lou. Hey, good afternoon. So we chatted a little bit about wanting to discuss as parents how to ensure that children have sort of a good understanding of what some of the risks are uh, in in sort of our new you know, cyber world uh, and, and really giving them ethical guidance uh, to behave appropriately online, right? Because I think there's some news recently around uh, you know, youth in cybercrime and how, how certain uh, attacker organizations are recruiting youths and you know sort of some characteristics to look for. So we wanted to chat a little bit about that today. And I think we found a website that talked about some some real obvious markers that we wanted to bring up because it, well, I, I'll let I'll let you know, one of you talk about that because I think it's a good intro. Uh, you mean obvious markers that they think are obvious or <laughs> I mean ju just the clearly obvious markers of watching television oh, mean, yeah watching TV but that, that was one <laughs> that was one uh, and and video know, games playing games right God forbid yeah so you know those are super obvious <laughs> did any of you give your children smartphones at a young age oh mine are too young for it right now yeah, how about but... how about you Lou when did your kids have a smartphone first I think the the age was always it was the eighth grade yeah that's that was, when I got that mine. Was, yeah, that was when we gave our, and, and I'm pretty sure my my children aren't cyber criminals at the moment. Well, by by these metrics that we're looking at right here from a 2019 Michigan State University study, I think I have to disagree. <laughs> they might be cyber criminals. I mean, if they inherit anything from their mother, um, they are not technically savvy. <laughs> like I just realized yesterday that my wife had 186 tabs open in her Safari on her iPhone, and she didn't know how to close them. So if my kids in here, any sort of her technical prowess, I don't think they're going to be <laughs> candidates for cyber criminals. But I will say that um, they are kind of they are they are they are smart to get around some of the things that we put in place at home to prevent, you know, for security reasons like you know firewall rules and then you know blocking of of sites and putting time time on. You know, using using your your cell phone providers tool sets. Uh, my son actually, <laughs> I caught my son subscribing to a VPN service, but he used my Apple ID to subscribe to it. Yeah. <laughs> so I knew immediately what he was trying to do. Um, so you know, they know. And this was this was this was this wasn't recently. This was a couple of years ago. So they know. You know, they and I I never he I never talked to him about any of that stuff. Right. I mean, he knows what, what to do and what not to do, but he kind of knew that, hey, to get around dad's firewall and and the tools put in place, I need to do this. So these kids are pretty savvy. So he's acting like, or was acting like a kid, pushing the boundaries and yeah. trying to find the limits. All right, not like a cyber guy, gang member. Right. That's right. kind of where it starts. Though. I mean, I, I remember back in... To high school. When it's I a first gateway started, drug. Right? That's what I was going to say. It's, it's gateway, gateway drug. drug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, usually it's you're trying to get around some type of protection, right? And right. usually it's it, it's. I mean, school is where you kind of start with that. They're blocking websites. They're uh, back in my day, they used to have something called deep freeze, where they would you know, oh, freeze oh, a hard oh, drive yeah. state. Yes. Right. Everyone tried to get around that, right? Uh, but that's kind of where that stuff starts, is right there. Well, that's. A, <laughs> I mean, that's the idea of hacking, right? So right. the original idea of hacking was simply people who are creatively utilizing technology to get around something that they didn't like, right? It wasn't necessarily, uh, you know, for, for mischievous, or maybe mischievous purpose, but not necessarily legal purposes intentionally, right? And let's be honest, kids are experts at playing one parent against the other or bending rules or interpreting things in their favor. It's exactly the case here in technology too. But those characteristics themselves in aggregate in one person, do not make someone who's malicious. Yeah. I, I mean, even curiosity can end up making you malicious, right? You're just curious on how something's working. You know, you're trying to figure out 
uh, how you can do something different or you, 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 for example, back to the example in high school, we found printers at the time, right? This is basic stuff. But, you know, when you're a kid in high school and you'd say, oh, I can print to any printer in the entire school. I don't like that teacher. So I guess I'm going to print out a bunch of stuff at their printer, right? Right. It's really just a lot of curiosity and trying to see what it is you can do. But that these days can get you in a lot of trouble. So, yeah, I actually want to piggyback on something that Lou did say, which was, his, you know, maybe his wife isn't the most technically savvy. And I think she's representative of the majority of parents probably. So, you know, I think it does beg the question, how, you know, what do you look for? And sort of how do you monitor your kids' activity online such that one, you know, they're not taking, being taken advantage of because there's certainly risk to that. And then, you know, maybe in those fringe cases, because I do believe it's fringe cases, you know, if your kids are engaged in something inappropriate or maybe even illegal, um, how do you identify it? Because I think that you know, it's a challenge for people. You know, Lou talking about having firewall rules in place and time limit restrictions on his phone and some of these other things. Frankly, a lot I think a lot of parents don't know how to do that. So what do you look for? And clearly it's not, hey, my kid watches a bunch of TV. I mean, yeah. that's, a, that's silly, right? But there have to be behaviors that you might want to – that might be markers. And I think it's worth talking about those. Yeah. I mean, I, th- I think that – Typically, if you're doing something malicious, a lot of the time, it takes a lot of time to do that. So I'd say extended amounts of time, like way too much time on your computer could be a marker, right? They could absolutely be doing other things, but you know, pay attention to how much time they're spending in front of it. Um, if they're really dedicated to just being on their computer all the time, you know, maybe they're doing something they shouldn't be. Mm. As well as you know, participation in communities that are outside of the norm. You know, yeah. and, and finding out what communities your children are actually right. actively and participating in is, is a challenge in and of itself, but it is important. It's really easy for other entities to convince any credulous person that they're trying to do something for the greater good or to the benefit of others, when in reality, they're just being used as pawns to execute a program or, you know, launch an attack indirectly, something like that. So understanding where they're going, what they're doing and spending time on is really where we start. Anything that talks about specific software being used by name or something to that effect, th- those lists, which are everywhere, some of which, you know, we've seen from a couple of different sources while researching this episode and, you know, that they, they don't make sense. They're immediately stale. Yeah. Th- th- that's not where you spend your time. Yeah, I mean, I guess a good way to do that is to you know, take interest in what they're what your kid is doing, right? And Lou, I'm sure you could probably speak to this a bit. It's probably not that easy, especially you know, with teenage boys and girls, they they aren't going to be so willing to let you take an interest in the things they want to be participating in. Yeah, I I, I would I would agree there. I, and just full disclosure, my 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 kids aren't children anymore, right? I've got I've got a junior in college, a freshman in college, so. Um, you know, it's actually been harder to 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 take an in, to take an interest in what not take an interest, but but find out what they're doing as they get older. But that's only because you know they're becoming adults, right? Um, I think asking the questions, you know, I mean, to sound like you know the the nuclear family approach, you know, having dinner you know, with your kids every night and being able to talk about, if you can be able to talk about what they did during the day and what they have upcoming, you know, just communicating with your kids and understanding where they're at and what they're doing. And, you know, don't stop trying, right. Don't stop trying because they're shutting down as teenagers. You gotta, you gotta keep, yeah, it's, it's hard work. You gotta keep working at it. Yeah. That's a good point. The not don't stop trying. That's, that's a good one. Actually. Kids are tricky too, in that sense, they have clicks inherently. Yeah. And, they have their own terminology that is difficult to pierce at times. Um, certainly if you have a kid who's an active gamer, they might be wearing a headset. They may not be, um, you know, visibly offering up the other side of the conversation. The best you can do is listen to what's being said in response to things. You know, a lot of the stuff that you could hear is specific to the game. It might not be specific to anything technology related, but, you know, paying attention to that and, Understanding what the terms mean might be part of the equation. It, it's very common that, and we were joking a minute ago, but it's very common that um, some of the team uh, talk applications that exist, like Discord, uh, overlap in gaming and in uh, community-driven 
cybercrime. N- knowing that that's occurring, you know, could be something that's an, an indicator, but certainly they're normal activities for a lot of kids. Um, it's kind of the same message. Listen closely. Right. I mean, I think communication is a key piece. It, it's, you know, into your point a little bit earlier, Matt, you know, are you online for an inordinate amount of time, but then are you online with your door shut? You know, if a right. parent comes, are you immediately, you know, do you see the kid switching tabs to something different? Like, is there an element of secretiveness uh, that's going on? And I think really the things we're talking about are just basic life skills, right? Talking to your kids and sort of paying attention to their behaviors yep. will give you some sense of whether or not you should or shouldn't intervene with something. Yeah. Also paying attention to their finances a little bit too. It's actually really That's tough fair. these days. It's not like they're going to get a check in the mail, right? There's tons of ways they could be getting compensation for you know, if they are engaged in some type of activity. But you know, if they're suddenly buying you know, shoes they can't afford, uh, you know, anything that they shouldn't be able to afford at that age, you know, start taking an interest in where that's coming from. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, <clears throat> in in my experience anyway, the curious kids and the malicious kids that, you know, straddle that line between just trying to be more knowledgeable in technology and yeah. those that try to use it in a, in a way that antagonizes others or ostracizes others or impacts an organization, it's really just an ethical choice a lot of the time. You know, instilling good critical thinking and social um, uh, awareness is frankly central to all of this. Um, I We have something in our shared history about an individual who, you know, got swept up in something uh, with law enforcement and, you know, perhaps did some things that he shouldn't have um, involving some online communities that helped hackers actually uh, launch deni- distributed denial of service attacks. It was very widespread. It was pretty innocuous as an individual action. But it should have been a little more easy to understand as something inappropriate to do if critical thinking and ethical thought had been involved from the forefront. Um, instilling that as sort of a base way of guiding all activity, especially when it comes to technology, because you are one step removed from a potential target, I think is probably the most important pillar of anything here. It's so funny you bring that up, um, Steve, because uh, I was just thinking about an incident we had about five years ago, maybe, maybe less, four or five years ago with a school that we worked with And um, they were getting DDoS attacks daily. And after much, you know, much um, tracking and researching and trying to figure this out, it turns out we, 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 we narrowed it down to a student that was, that was in the school system that was attacking his own network just for fun. Right. I mean, like, you know, Probably a little bit of the challenge of hacking the man was involved in that. And I think that, you know, sometimes that that's what one of the things that could atta- attract teenagers to cybercrime, you know, that kind of morally justice type approach. But this kid was just doing it just because he, for no other reason, just because he wanted to do it. Um, and I think sometimes that, you know, that that attracts you know, teenagers of cybercrime because, you know, he, he was probably boasting to his friends that the, right. I'm doing, I'm doing this, you know, I'm going to take the school down today. Um, yeah. It's so, akin to pulling the fire alarm right in the yeah. old days. That's it is. That's ex- yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good, Jason. Thank you. You know, the, the, the <laughs> trouble is that, you know, for, for activity like that, where you might start out as someone learning innocuously, uh, for, for the person controlling a computer program that does that type of work, and, and I'm being generic because it's not helpful to be specific here, the, the difference between discovery and probing and learning and actual, you know, negative impact could be just a couple of letters, you know, in a command <laughs> being yeah. executed. Yeah. So, you know, if you're someone innocent who has seen no negative impact or even observation of what you're doing, that you're, that you're aware of, right? Um, and you're just a student trying to figure out something cool that you, you read about. Uh, it's not a large leap to go to something that 
could be actually quite impactful. Right. And, and that transition, the ease of that transition, I think, is where a lot of kids can occasionally get swept up into something that actually shifts far more toward criminal activity. And that ease of transition is exploited by more professional folks in the sphere who manipulate others. That's part of this entire uh, landscape. And I think it's really important to keep that aspect in mind. Yeah. I mean, there, there's spectrums of activity, right? I mean, participating in you know, lapses uh, as somebody who's part of, you know, actively part of organized crime is very different than yeah. say the, the, the young person's belief that all media should be free and, you know, streaming an NFL game or restreaming an NFL game, right? So, you know, one's copyright infringement and one does some actual harm you know, to businesses or individuals, both technically illegal. I, I'd say they are, you know, there are different ends of the spectrum there. Yeah, and I, I think the you know there's there's also some ways to re redirect that energy, if you will. You know, if if there are educators out there listening, it, try cultivating that through you know different channels of hey, you know, if we've got someone in your your school system that can help them learn how to do this ethically, uh, help them understand what they're doing, and, and honestly, I think a lot of uh, especially younger folks, they just don't know that some of the things that they're doing can cause legal implications, right? They don't understand those things. So teaching them that what they're doing is wrong and why it's wrong and giving a path to them doing it ethically is, is a good thing too. Right. There, there are lots of organizations that today exist to encourage and right. appropriately teach kids who are interested. It's just giving a sandbox that's not necessarily, um, you know, going to produce a felony <laughs> that is the required outcome. Right. Some school systems actually in a very enlightened way, encourage that type of thing. Um, finding out if there is some vehicle locally um, is really quite important. Makerspaces, hackerspaces, these are groups of people who know things of this variety and act deliberately in a mentoring kind of capacity. If you can take a kid who expresses an interest out of um, sort of isolated personal experimentation and really limited exposure to the rest of the world through forums and, and gaming channels and so forth and shifting them to that more in-person guided mentor uh, mentorship environment, it'll produce a more positive outcome. I think the message here is not to intervene and clamp down on activity. Right. It's redirect. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're not automatically a criminal that needs to be dealt with. This could right. just be, they don't understand what they're doing and how to do it. Get them into some type of situation where it's a positive thing. Yeah, harness their interests, right? The So, I mean, I think, you know, looking to sort of move toward a conclusion here a little bit, I, I actually really appreciate what, what Lou said because I think it takes a, maybe a, a modern issue or a current issue around, you know, the inappropriate use of technology. And I think just grounds it in more traditional approach of simply communicating with your you know, communicating as a family, communicating with your kids to understand what their activities are and and actually help build some of the things that that you both are talking about, right? The ethical understanding of their activities and how to appropriately sort of move forward in technology. Agreed. Um, I don't, any parting thoughts at all? I don't believe that I would be where I am today if I didn't experiment in some ways that in an inappropriate environment could be considered... Um, dangerous. I was fortunate enough to either know folks or um, have the, the right people around me to encourage those isolated environments or facilitate work or, you know, give me some latitude to operate with permission. Um, it's a conversation. If you're, if you're a younger person, um, there are other people like you. <laughs> it, <laughs> you're not alone. You're, you're, you're not alone. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't mean it in jest. Really, it's just there are other people like you, and no, that's true. You can find them, yeah, and you can have a productive, very um, beneficial type of growth experience instead of something that is, frankly, um, more likely to occur, sort of behind the curtain or, you know, behind the scenes. So uh, think of it that way. So, so I want to go, were, were you a criminal? When I think no. about, when I think <laughs> about you stealing bandwidth and shooting it, you know, shooting it across oh, to no. other people's houses through your Pringle can antenna, 
Was that you know, was that bandwidth theft or was that just creativity? No, that's their own private network. It's different. It's, it's true. true. Private it's true. network. It was. Yeah, that's fair. All right, just extending it. Mm-hmm. So, but oh, there, oh. there's a lot of interesting things people do out there. Yeah. So that was all under FCC radiation limits, just to be very clear. Uh, well, I, it was a Pringles can after all. So. Uh, well, all right. On that note, I think. I mean, I think we all can advocate. You know, better discussions with with family members. That, that's certain. You know, that's certain to help. But you're really paying attention to behaviors. Uh, especially as kids get older and you know, sort of seek more alone time. I, I think it's really important to be mindful of that. And and be critical of any sort of guidance uh, delivered via the nightly news about things to identify because they're probably yeah. uh, not quite right. Yeah, I mean, my kid watches TV, so I'm incredibly suspicious now. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt about it. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys, as always, I appreciate you joining. Lou, thanks for thanks for jumping in today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, and you know, it, it, this is this is a complicated topic. If anybody's interested in in discussing it more uh, with you know par- with with parents of a variety of aged kids in the technology space, we're happy to we're happy to engage. So feel free to reach out to us. And and as always, we hope you got some value out of today. Thanks for listening. We'd love to hear your feedback. Feel free to get in touch at Vancord on LinkedIn or on Twitter at Vancord Security. And remember, stay vigilant, stay resilient. This has been CyberSound.